Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Robert Cummings in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story based on fact, the dramatization of one man's deadly way of earning his living. All he needed was the morning newspaper, a telephone, and a gun. It's called Want Ad. Our star, Mr. Robert Cummings. Good evening. This is Harlow Wilcox. You, and I mean every one of you, have the opportunity of a lifetime. The Autolite family offers $100,000 to be distributed by you to your church, hospital, favorite local or national charity, heart or cancer fund, March of Dimes, any recognized charity. And it's so easy to participate. Just visit the showroom of any DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler dealer. Ask him for a registration form. Print your name and address and have him sign it. Now, here is Mrs. Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney, who is famous for her work with charities. She, like thousands of others, wants to know more about the amazing Autolite Family Charity Fund. Thank you. This $100,000 Autolite Family offer for charity sounds like a most extraordinary opportunity for all Americans to help their favorite charities. Can anyone register? Anyone in America, Mrs. Whitney. Mrs. Whitney will be back later to hear more about this great drawing. Remember, visit your Autolite family car dealer and sign up tomorrow. And now, Autolite presents transcribed Want Ad, starring Mr. Robert Cummings, hoping once again to keep you in... Suspense. You see, a guy in my line works alone, more or less. <laughs> At least he should. But uh, when I first got into town, I met a little lady. And uh, after we'd known each other a couple of months, we got married. As a matter of fact, it worked out pretty well. Uh, every morning, she gets up ahead of me, fixes some eggs and coffee. <laughs> it's pretty nice, huh? The uh, little lady's name is Wilma. Baby... Oh, baby. Mm, through with the funnies. Oh, uh-huh. Do you have to work today? Mm, afraid so. Oh, I was hoping we could spend a quiet day together here. You know, sort of lie around, look at the paper and everything. <laughs> Maybe you know I'd like that. But I have to do other things. Leave me all alone to spend the day by myself. I've got a new dress. I could wear it. Fine. Now I better get busy. Oh, you just never pay any attention. Well, all right. Baby. <laughs> I think I'll go window shopping. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, let's see. Section three. Pages ten to seventeen. Now then, uh, K, I, two, eight, nine, eight. Hello? I'm, uh, calling about an advertisement in this morning's paper. Do I have the right number? Yes, yes I am. Uh, what uh, kind of code is it? Ah, uh, that, well, that sounds uh, like something I might be interested in seeing. Uh, just let, let me get that down. It's, all right. 1425, what? Yondota? How do you spell that? Yondota, yeah. Uh, in about an hour. Thank you. One for the money. Two for the show. Three to make ready. Four to go. And five to make sure. And uh, six to blow. If I have to.
How many women can go out and plunk down the kind of money it takes to walk out of a store with a mink coat? Huh? <laughs> not many. For my dough, not any. That means where there's a mink, you can bet there's a boyfriend or a husband around to pay for it. Yeah. And you can bet when the coat's got to go that he's already gone. The lady's got to eat. Get it? She's all alone. And she wants to sell her coat. Oh, how do you do? Yes? I'm uh, Mr. Vernon. I called about your advertisement in the paper this morning. Oh, yes, Mr. Vernon. You uh, haven't sold it yet. Uh, well, no, I, I haven't. Oh, that's good. Now, I don't want to do business with any dealer. I just don't want to be bothered with any dealers. Half a dozen have called me already. I hope you're not a dealer, Mr. Vernon. <laughs> do I look like a dealer? Uh, well, I, I can't tell anymore. They're very clever people. I just want to sell the coat outright to somebody. Not on any contingency basis or anything like that. Just sell it outright. You know what I mean. Yes, I, I know what you mean. But I'll, uh, I'll have to see it before I can make an offer. Well, all right. Uh, come in. Well, I, I'm Mrs. Phelps. Oh, how do you do? Uh, you have a very, very nice home here, Mrs. Phelps. Thank you. Have you lived here long? Uh, two years. Uh, would you like to step in here, please? Oh, yes, sure. Oh, dear, I've been plagued to death with all kinds of dealers. I don't know how, but some of them found my address without even calling the number I put in the paper. Why, do they do things like that? Oh, they sure do. Let me tell you, they certainly do. Well, there it is. Yes. That's uh, very, very nice. Very, very nice. It's silver mink. Yes. Oh, uh, say, could I ask you to put it on for me, Mrs. Phelps? It'd help me. You see, you're about my wife's size. Oh, sure. Well, you can see it's cut very full. Yeah. The sleeves are very full, too, see? See, bat wing sleeves. And, and cuffs, too. Makes a coat very luxurious. Yes, a lot of coat there. Just a lot of coat, Mrs. Phelps. Well, I love it. I just love it. My husband bought it for me a year ago, and I hate to have to sell it, but, well, I need the money. Uh, you can see that it's hardly worn at all. Uh-huh. See? Here, look at the lining. It's it's all intact. I don't think I wore this coat more than a dozen times. Uh, how much did it cost you retail, Mrs. Phelps? Well, Mr. Phelps paid $4,500 for it. These are the insurance papers. Now, you can see what they insured it for. Uh-huh. Now, I'll tell you right now, a friend has already offered me $2,800 for it. I wouldn't think of selling it for any way near that. Why, I, I'd rather keep it. Um, would you uh, think of uh, selling it for 34 34 Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's still pretty cheap. Well, I don't have to tell you that a, a coat's a year old, $600 depreciation, that's not bad. I could possibly get the same coat for 38 Well... I doubt if you'll get a better offer than 34, Mrs. Phelps. I'm, I'm willing to pay for it right now. Hmm. Well, I, I'll have to talk to my husband first. Is uh, he uh, here now? Well, he's not home right now, but he'll be here any minute. Uh, could you come back this afternoon? Or, or maybe you could I just... I came to buy the coat now. I'm, I'm leaving town this afternoon. I thought you were ready to sell. Well, I... <sighs> All right, Mr. Vernon. I'll take your offer. Good. But I, I don't know you at all. You understand you'd have to give me a certified check, or, or I'd have to keep the coat until your check cleared the bank. Well, I'll pay cash. I brought the cash with me. Oh. Anything wrong with that? Oh, no. No, Mr. Vernon. I, I just didn't expect to sell it so quickly. <laughs> I still have the box it came in. It's a perfectly lovely box. I'll give you that for nothing. Yes, I, I would like the box. <laughs> you know, Mr. Vernon, you, you are getting a bargain, a real bargain in this coat. I tell you, my husband and I looked almost two years before we found a mink that, well, just suited. You know what I mean? Now, you can buy any fur coat, a mink or a sable. I don't care what it is. Thirty days later, you hate the sight of it. But this one, your wife will never get tired of. Look, isn't this a pretty box? Yes. Yes, it is. Now, you tell your wife to be sure and keep it in a fur storage vault during the warm months. You have to take care of mink. Now, that's all there is to yes, it. Yes, I know. There's 
Something like this, you really got to take care of. Oh, my, I'm glad you came in the morning. I want to take the money to the bank right away. I'd hate to have to keep that much money around the house. I, I figured you would, Mrs. Phelps, so I won't bother giving you the money. Uh, what? But then you won't have to make a trip to the bank or worry about the money around the house. Oh, you mean you want to give me a personal check? I want to give you nothing. Well, you... You did come here to buy this coat. D don't you want it? Yeah. I want it, lady. Oh, you... You're, you're a thief! I sure am. Now, don't scream. Oh. Don't open your mouth. Oh, don't, don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Over there. Go on. Worth $4,000. One year old. Real goodbye. <laughs> you should have seen your face when I told you I'd give you 3400 bucks for it. Oh. I'm a thief. <laughs> Anybody could buy that coat brand new for 2500 bucks. Oh, it'll bring me about 1000 The shape's in right now. I'm a thief with a gun in my hand taking what I want. Now, if you figure out what you'd be if you were counting my 3400 Oh, you're quite a cute kidder, Mrs. Phelps. But then I'm used to people like you. Get in there. Oh, oh don't take my coat, please. It's the only thing I have that's worth anything. <laughs> well, that's how simple it works. <laughs> I, I've been in the business for a little while now, and I know a few things about it. Of course, you've got to watch your step and be ready for anything that happens, like uh, today. Uh oh Liz! Liz, I've been trying to... Oh. Well, who are you? Oh, hi. Uh, who are you? Well, I'm Frank Phelps. Who'd you say you were? Well, I didn't say. Besides, you wouldn't know me anyhow. Where's Liz? Hey, that's Liz. It is. That's Liz Coat. My gun. Why, you... What have you done to her? Hey, what's been going on hey, Hang on to your hat, brother. You won't get hurt. She's okay. No cheap crook's going to come into my house and pull a stunt like this. I'll show you. Get, get down. 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 Stay down. Well, well. You people certainly have something to talk about over dinner tonight, won't you? <laughs> yeah. Something you can talk about, all right. Now, when the hard part's done, and it isn't usually as hard as it was today, the next part is to get hold of a fence who can use a mink coat. Pretty easy. I use Walter myself. He takes the paint on everything. I don't go to him. Just a little old phone call, and he comes to me. Sorry. Huh? You blew it this time, boy. I don't want this thing. It's too hot. Keep it. What's the matter? You getting touchy? I'm not getting anything. I just don't want to do business with you anymore. No, sir. Hey, now, now, wait, wait a minute. Get your hands off of me, boy. Get your hands off of me. A smash makes you big time, huh? Is that it? A gun whip turns you into Class A stuff? <laughs> Hands off of me, boy. The last time I'll ask. Well, there's no, no sense in us arguing, Walter. I'm going to try very hard, but I don't think I'm going to like you anymore. You're a killer now. Huh? That guy Phelps died this afternoon. It's in all the papers. He shouldn't have run at me. Is that what you're going to tell the cops when they drag you out of somewhere by the scruff of the neck? No cop's going to do that to me. They always grind off little punks like you, boy. You killed the guy. You beat him to death. You stole his wife's mink coat. There isn't any place they won't look for you, boy. And they know where to look for your kind. They won't stop till they find you. Eh, you're gone, boy, just plain gone. Only you don't know it yet. So long. Autolite, 
is bringing you Mr. Robert Cummings in Want Ad, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Here you are, Mac. Your Hudson dealers. Thanks, Cabby, and here you are. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir? What can I do for you? Well, I'm Harlow Wilcox. I'd like to get some information on the new Hudson. Tonight, uh, we are privileged to salute Hudson on suspense as a distinguished member of the Autolite family. And you're saluting a great car. Or, I should say, cars. Here's one of our three models, the new Hudson Hornet. Only 60 inches high with that famous step-down design for the road-huggingest ride you ever had. And it has the new instant-action engine with super induction. Mm -hmm. And uh, what model is this? That's the 54 Hudson Wasp. More power, new styling, and a new lower price. And here's that new Hudson Jet, eh? Yes, sir. A new kind of car. Compact, economical, and really low-priced. And, of course, all these Hudsons are equipped with quality Autolite products. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Autolite is proud of its long association with the Hudson Motor Car Company and Hudson dealers everywhere. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Robert Cummings in Elliot Lewis's production of Want Ad, a story based on fact and well calculated to keep you in suspense. No, maybe a half a dozen fences in town. Only tried two of them after Waller. <laughs> Those fellows are kind of chicken about some things. <laughs> they get a little action with a piece of merchandise and they all get scared. Of course, they're all afraid of something or other. Are you thinking, hon? Is that what you're doing, thinking? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. About that man. Didn't he want the coat? No. Mm, such a pretty, pretty coat. Oh, baby, I wish we had a fireplace. I wish we had a big, big fireplace and then we could sit in front of a fire on a rainy night like this and everything. That'd be nice, wouldn't it, baby? Yeah, it sure would. We could drink hot coffee, maybe, listen to music, make fudge, huh? Uh-huh. You like my new thing? What? This. Isn't it pretty? Oh, yeah. Like a million. Like a whole million bucks. I liked it, so I bought it just like that. You hardly looked. I'll have to leave town. I have to get out of here. I have to go where they can't find me. Oh, baby. Oh, no. What's the matter? <laughs> Did I say something? You're going to leave me. You're going away. Oh, now, look, kid, look. I have to go. Don't you understand, Puddin'? I have to leave town. If I don't, they'll get me. They won't get you here. Just stay here with me. I have to go. I have to go. Take me with you. Huh? Let me go with you. We can have some real nice time, some other place, the same as we did here. Well, I... Yeah, sure. I'll take you. Oh, baby. I'll take you. Oh, baby, you're so good to me. Oh, nah, nah. We haven't got time for that. We gotta get busy. We have to get a car first. Well, we haven't got any money. <laughs> Look, how did I get that coat? How did I get all those coats? Oh, but Ralph, you can't do that anymore. That man who was here said they're looking for you. You can't do that anymore. They'll be waiting for you. He says I can't. I say I can. Don't you see how I use my head, baby? They're waiting for me, okay? They're waiting for a guy with a fur coat on his mind. But, baby... I'm now a guy with a car on his mind. Get it? Oh, baby. You're so smart. <laughs> Gee, you're so smart. Well, sir, with little old Wilma wiggling around in my arms, I began to go over the new idea with myself. It was pretty good. The next day when the papers came out, I went right to work. Hey, baby, this is the one. Hey, this is the one. Which one is the one? This one, for sale. Like new, late model convertible private party. 
I just called. Oh, well, what was the matter with the other's baby? I told you, a man answered on the other calls. This time it was a woman who answered. Oh. It's the same thing. A woman trying to sell a car or a coach. She's alone. No one around. Makes it safer. Oh, I see. Do you like my new hat? Yeah, fine. It's a knockout, baby. Knockout. I wear it in the car. What kind of car do you say it is? Convertible. Big new convertible. Oh, we'll look swell going down the highway in a big convertible. Maybe we can put the top down. Yeah, we sure can. I told her we'd be right over to look at the car. Hey, you're coming with me. Yeah. It'll look better if you come with me. There won't be any trouble. I mean, the police are looking for you, aren't they? Baby, you let me worry about the police. There won't be any trouble at all. Just keep your new hat on. Come with me, baby. All right. I'll dress all up. Yeah, it took her a little while, but I finally got her over there. It was a very nice-looking house. Just the kind of a place where they'd need a convertible to show off a little bit. My meat. <laughs> Wilma thought it was a very nice place, too. Hey, baby. Hmm? The gum. You know, juicy fruit. You want some? Take out the gum, baby. Oh. And, um, I better do the talking, you know. I've been at this kind of thing for a long time now. Yeah, well, you know best. Do I look all right? Yes, well. Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, I'm the man about the car. Oh, yes. I'm Mr. Watson. This is Mrs. Watson. Oh, well, come in, please. Well, we'd uh, like to see the car if we could. We're in a kind of a hurry. Well, the car's in the garage in the back. It's just easier to come through the house. Well, all right. This way. Hey, there's something funny about this. What? If she had a car for sale, she'd have it sitting in the driveway or out front. Not hidden in the garage. After the rain last night, I thought it best to keep it in the garage. I wanted it to look nice to show today. Ah, oh, silly. Come on. <laughs> but you two are newly married. Oh, no, we... Yeah, we, we've been married for some time now. <laughs> you just look like newlyweds somehow. <laughs> this way. Hello. Oh, hello. This is my husband, Mr. and Mrs. Watson. Oh, uh... Hello, Mr. Watson. How do you do, I'm sure. You seem familiar, Mr. Watson. Uh, have you lived here long? Uh, no, no, we're just passing through, as a matter of fact. Where are you staying? At the Alpine Hotel. Oh. How long did you say you've been in town? Uh, a week. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an electrician. Where did you say you were from? Uh, Cleveland. Uh, what part? Shaker Heights. Well, this must be quite different than Shaker Heights, Mrs. Watson. Oh, it is, it, it is. Isn't it? What do you think of the car? Uh, well, I haven't really had a chance to look at it yet. Well, there she is. Take a look. Yeah. That's a pretty nice car, all right. Well, what are you asking for it? Well, Blue Book's paying 32 for this model right now. Uh, cost you 38 on a lot. We'll compromise. 35? Well, that sounds pretty good. A little steep, though. Uh, how about 34? Can you get someone to carry the papers? Oh, I can pay for it myself. You brought cash? Well, no, but I, I can go over to the bank and get it, if you'll give me an hour. No cash. <laughs> well, you didn't expect me to walk in here with 3400 on me, did you? After all, I, I don't know you people from Adam. <laughs> no offense, but a man would be crazy to carry that much money around strangers. What bank? Huh? He asked you what bank you'd go to to get the money. Oh, uh, why, just any bank. I'll, uh, I'll draw a draft on myself, on my Cleveland account. You say you're an electrician, Mr. Watson. Uh, yes. Is your name really Watson? What? Don't you usually look for fur coats? What? What's your real name? Huh? Your real name, what is it? Baby. Shut up. Let her talk. <laughs> say, I, I came over here to buy a car. What is this? There's the car. Buy it. Well, I'd like to try it out first. <laughs> Baby, will you shut up? Will you please shut up? You have some identification? <laughs> Identification? Uh, baby, would you shut up? Just shut up. What's the matter with your wife? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. We thought you might be needing a car. Huh? I said we thought you might be needing a car to take a trip in. <sighs> I don't know what you're talking about. You know a man named Phelps? Frank Phelps? 1425 West Yondota Street. Uh, well, I, I told you I'm new here. I, I don't know any talent at all. I, I don't know any Frank Phelps. 
Maybe. <laughs> Frank Phelps was killed yesterday. A man went in his house, stole a mink coat from his wife, then used his gun on Frank Phelps when he came home unexpectedly. He beat him to death, Watson. He stood there and beat him to death. Well, I, I, I don't know any Frank Phelps. I think you do. No, I don't, I tell you. I, I don't. Do I, baby? No, honest, he doesn't. Neither do I. Mrs. Watson. Yes? You know we're police officers, don't you? Yes. I want to ask you one question. Yes? Why are you wearing Mrs. Phelps' mink coat? What? Well, I didn't think you'd mind. You never pay any attention to the things I wear. You just never pay any attention at all. Oh, baby. Baby? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Let's go. We went. <laughs> and let me tell you this in case you want to think something over later. Always work alone. Always. That's one little old rule I'm sticking to from now on. Yes, sir. Now, the next time it'll be different. But that don't make any difference either. Because there isn't going to be any next time. For me. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Robert Cummings. Here is Mrs. Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney again to hear more about the $100,000 Autolite family charity drawing. Harlow, we leave the registration form with the dealer, and is that all we have to do? Yes, that's all there is to it. You don't buy anything, write any sentences, solve any puzzles. Just print your name and address, and you may be one of the 25 selected. And then those selected at the drawing in June may name the local or national charity to share this fund. Yes, they may name the church, hospital, national, or local charity that they wish to get a share of this huge $100,000 total from Autolite. Everyone should consider it a privilege to participate in this great offer. It may mean thousands of dollars to your favorite charity. And I am honored to help announce this generous offer. Thank you, Mrs. Whitney. Friends, go to any DeSoto, Hudson, Plymouth, Studebaker, Dodge, Willis, Nash, Packard, Kaiser, or Chrysler dealer. Help your church, your hospital, your charity, your community. Sign up tomorrow. Next week, a lady with a big voice and lots of good humor meets a man with a soft voice and a very sharp knife. It's called... Never follow a banjo act. Our star, Miss Ethel Merman. That's next week on... Suspense. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Want Ad was written for Suspense by E. Jack Newman. Featured in tonight's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Virginia Gregg, Paula Winslow, Larry Thor, and Charles Calvert. Robert Cummings will soon be seen starring in Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder, a Warner Brothers color 3D. And remember next week, Miss Ethel Merman in Never Follow a Banjo Act. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>